I begin with the greetings of peace, the greetings mentioned by the prophets, <coughs> the patriarchs, and the messengers from the beginning of time. Uh, to our present, I speak them to you in Arabic initially, assalamu alaikum, but for our guests who may not be familiar with Arabic, peace be upon you. Now those eternal greetings are actually very significant and they carry the spirit of the Islam Awareness Week that we are here to share with, uh, with each other. And I've been allocated a very interesting topic, Moses, because he's uh, an individual, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him, and all of the other prophets and messengers that preceded him and those who have come after him, cumulating and ending, according to Muslims, with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, my discussion with you today is going to range from murder, I'm going to talk about murder, we're going to talk about things that are inanimate, unmoving, that logically should not shift or possess certain features. By divine will, power, by the authority of God, they change. Rocks produce water. Bodies of water split. People are saved and salvaged. We're going to also talk about fate, predestiny, qadr. We're going to speak about marriage. I know I'm talking about Moses, right? I won't be as far reaching as our previous speaker in the tangents that we will address. But we will take a very detailed look at the life of this great Prophet of Allah, who is actually makes up the most of the qasas, or the authoritative stories that are found of biblical individuals or prophet, uh, prophetic individuals in the Qur'an. No other prophet, no other messenger is spoken in more detail of by Allah in the Qur'an than the prophet Musa, Musa or Moses. So we are going to look at it from a historical perspective that's narrated in a chronology from the Qur'an, but we wish to also extract some important lessons and benefits for you and I as people of faith, people of moral values. And the message that I deliver you today is an intrinsic message. It's a message that's common and shared by all people. So it's a universal message. And that's my aim with you today, inshallah. Fate. Imagine at a point in time, a governor, a ruler, makes a decree and says, that from this day forth, every male child from a particular racial ethnicity or from a particular cultural background, any male child is to be taken and executed within three days of his birth. That was the decree of Pharaoh, Fir'aun, as is mentioned in the Quran. He ordered that after having seen a dream that was interpreted for him by his priests, that there's going to be someone who will emerge who will usurp and take his power, remove him from his authority. And then that person would be a male child from the Israelites. So he decided with his wisdom that any male child, their life was to be extinguished. Take the child from his mom, kill him. And Allah mentions to us in Surah Al-Qasas, Pharaoh, his advisors, Haman, his army, all who supported him were in enormous error. They were in plain error. And yet you find that that which would bring an end to that dictatorship, to that established kuf, that established ungratefulness, disbelief in God, that tyrannical process, that that which would bring its demise was the birth of a child. And Allah tells you in the Quran, after the birth of Musa, and it's actually one of the most majestic verses, one of the great poets of Arabic language of Islam, Labib, he says, while he was walking one day, he heard a young girl reciting poetry. And Arabic is a really poetic language. It's got rhythm, it's got rhyme, it, it's got stanzas, and it, it goes up and down. And 
it's uh, symmetrical. Even when you read the Quran, sometimes those of us who aren't attuned with it, we, we fail to see the beauty of the synchronicity in it. Allah, for example, will tell you in the Quran, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ And your Lord, we, in English we have to translate two words, we have to translate it, your Lord proclaim Him as the Most High and worthy of worship. But in Arabic, if you can see those letters in your mind, Rabbak, the Ra, the Ba, the Kaf, is the actual symmetrical opposite of Kabir. Ka, Ba, Ra. So the rhythm of the language, the language of the Quran isn't just in its wording, isn't just in its flow of up and down. There's more to it. And that's why the Arabic language, the Quran, it's, it's an Arabic tongue. It's an Arabic language. It's a powerful language. It's a static language. It's an unchanging language. As I gave reference to your brothers and sisters in the audience at Warwick University, as an Arabic-speaking person, when I refer to a computer, I say, Hada, computer. This is a computer. You don't invent Arabic words. They're static. There's actually a book, Mu'adam, an en enormous encyclopedia compendium of all the Arabic root words that begin from one end to the other. So Allah says in this verse where he gives two instructions, two warnings, and two, pro and two glad tidings or uh, good news. In one sentence he says, فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِي فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِّ وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَعَلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Upon the birth of her child, the mother of Moses, knowing soldiers are going to come knocking on her door, she hid her child. She would feed him in the dark. She wouldn't let anyone hear his, his she would stifle his cries, as is mentioned to us in the seerah. She wouldn't let anyone know that she had given birth. She lied to people for a, a period of time and would have her daughter dress in her clothes and walk in the street so people would say, oh, look, no, look, she's still walking around. She hasn't given birth yet. Don't go to her home yet. But you can only keep that charade up for so long. So Allah says, فَأَوْحَيْنَا We gave revelation to the mother of Moses. Wahy. You know that word? It's the same word that Allah uses in discussing or reporting his correspondence to the Prophet ﷺ. We say, Jibreel what brought wahy to the Prophet ﷺ. I don't want you to get confused. I don't want you to think that it was a divine revelation to her. It was a feeling in her heart. It was intuition. What does that mean? It means for you and I, the closer you come to Allah, He leads your heart. You're, you're at a point in time where you're deciding something in your life. If you're not close to your Lord, if you're not close to Allah, if you're not close to God, your heart isn't leading you in the right way. Allah put in her heart this message for her. Look, feed him, care for your child. But when you come to that point of fear, put him in a basket, throw him in a river. Wow. That's fate. What does that mean? It means that there's a moment in your life now or in your past or coming up in your future where Allah has decided something critical for you that you have no power or influence to avert or to bring about in speed or expedience. <coughs> Pharaoh thought that he could end the life of Moses that would end everything. Moses, as a young infant, not knowing anything about angels, or the books, or the Torah, or the Pharaoh, not knowing anything, just being suckled as a young child, innocent baby, thrown in the water, put in a basket. Qadr. Fate. There's moments in your life you have no power or control or authority over. And it's important for you, the sooner you are, and the younger you are, that you learn this lesson that there is a mightier authority than you. There is a greater power than you. <coughs> there is an influence on your life leading you right, left, center, forward, backwards. 